Hello and welcome. This is episode number 19 of the Indie Game X podcast. My name is Richard and this week is going to be a pretty short intro. Well, I'm trying to make it short anyway because it's quite time sensitive as this week we are featuring a live Kickstarter game. So as of recording the main audio, there was 10 days left of the Kickstarter. But due to my editing times, there is now five days left to back this project. So I want to just get this in here now so you can pause the podcast, head over to Kickstarter and search for Haiku the Robot. Um, as that is the developer we're going to be talking to today, so uh, who is Jordan. Um, but I really want you to go to Kickstarter and just make sure you check out the uh, the backing options if you're interested. That's all I wanted to say for the intro. So let's jump straight into uh, our discussion with Jordan. See you soon. Right. Hello. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, this is definitely the first take, I promise. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what your game is? Hiya. So i um, super happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm Jordan. I'm the solo developer behind Haiku the Robot. I do all the art, animation, and programming. And Haiku the Robot is a little Metroidvania game all about a robot who wakes up in a post-apocalyptic world where no humans or life forms are left and all the machines are infected by some mysterious evil virus. Awesome. So it's basically Haiku's job to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is in a nutshell. Perfect. I saw your game probably, it's probably about, about a month ago now, um, just before the Kickstarter went live. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was what, what you've done fantastic, uh, fantastically, yes, that's a word, uh, is uh, the, the color palette and the style of the game is instantly recognizable. Um, uh, that's that's great to hear. <laughs> yeah, because straight away, I mean, it was on Twitter. I saw you saw some posts on Twitter, and once you see it once, uh, you know, you can, I can see a screenshot, and I can tell it's your game straight away. So uh, that is was that uh, was that on purpose? Um, kind of like <laughs> when I was picking the palette, I was thinking like, okay, what's going to stand out? Because I think, and like, there's been a lot of design design decisions as well that I've made, which you know, kind of just go against what most pixel art games look like today. Because I had this feeling that most pixel art games just all look the same, at, at, up to some extent, you know, like they're mm-hmm. either very detailed and have like either a very specific retro look. And I was thinking maybe I could do that, but with more of a modern take. So like the color palette initially was only going to be eight colors in total. So, um, but I definitely picked out one which I thought was nice and vibrant and kind of matched the theme that I wanted to go with, this post-apocalyptic world theme. Yeah. It, it, again, it looks fantastic straight away. That's what I love about it. It just catches your eye, which is, uh, which is fantastic. Um, so before we go too much into the sort of technical stuff of how mm-hmm. and why, let's, let's start because your story is probably as interesting as, as any of this, as where you've started from. because. Are you going to tell me that you've been developing games for the last 20 years and this is the culmination of all that hard work? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, okay. I so... started like a year ago, basically. Just over a year ago now. And that is what is amazing. Oh, um, man. Uh, how, Stop it. <laughs> how the hell? <laughs> how the hell? Um, because the, the, the way of popular thinking is that your first three, four games are going to be rubbish, terrible. You know, that's just the way it works. You know, you start you start learning to program and make games, and the first games you make are terrible, and then you just get better and better. Yeah, um, that's true. So how have you got to this point in a year? Of So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like, this isn't exactly my first game, right? So I've made, like, I think it's about eight smaller games up until now. Some of them are, like, mobile games. Some of them are like game game jam games. Some of them are just tutorials that I followed and stuff like that. So I've I I I like to believe that I've already gone through that crappy phase <laughs> of making crappy games. <laughs> what time scale are we talking there? With like these other games. I mean, they're really short, but I remember like the first game I made. It took me about a month, I think. And it was just an endless runner, but it was like um, really, really buggy. Like there was, you, you pressed the jump button, and he jumped about a second or two later. So it was kind of 
<laughs> challenging in the sense you had to kind of uh preemptive jumping yeah exactly like predict when you needed to jump and stuff. Yeah, that, was a, that was a feature now <laughs> yeah basically um but so when did you when did you first start programming of any sort have you been doing of any it? sort it was end of july i think if i if i remember correctly it was end of july beginning of august 2019 2019 yeah but i mean okay, i'm struggling to get my simple mind around this so you did no programming ever before that time no, not really. Like um, at work, I uh, we we like manage a website, but we use something like WordPress, you know, yep. so it doesn't need any coding. I mean, I know a little bit of HTML from that, but that's about it. Oh my god, you you make me sick. <laughs> but I won't say I'm like a pro coder wow. now. I just I just know enough for the game engine, and that's it. That uh, that's it's just unbelievable. I mean, it, again, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen Haiku the Robot, it, you will think you will think this is a lie because it's almost like, how the hell have you done this? I'm amazed. Um, well, well, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I've called you I a mean, liar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, in no, in all honesty, it's not that hard nowadays, I feel, because you can go to YouTube and there's, like, a lot of stuff on there for free. And it and like there's amazing t channels like Brackies and Blackthorn Prod and all sorts, and they just do free tutorials, and you basically just watch those and learn those, and that's it. It, it the difficult part, I guess, is kind of making sure that everything works together, but it's not that hard to get started, I would say. Well, again, it's seriously, seriously impressive. Um, I can hear all the indie devs sort of just starting out now, going, "What?" <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I hope that it serves as like encouragement, you know, like if I can do it, then I'm pretty sure other people can do it. Yeah, so... well, that's exactly. And that's exactly one of the reasons, you know, why I wanted to speak to you, because, you know, it's huge um, encouragement for anyone looking to get into game development. And of yeah. course, not everybody's going to pick it up as well as you have. It's just, you know, but for for me, I would still be on the tutorial number one months later but if anyone's looking to get into development and they are starting it can as you can see it can be done you can you can do it so let's what is haiku uh what engine is it running in it's uh running on unity and i picked unity for the reason of that there's just so much documentation you know there's a massive community around it and i think that's essential for like, especially if you don't know what, what you're doing, it's essential to uh, pick something <laughs> where there's a lot of free resources and <laughs> that you can check. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so it's running in Unity, and all the artwork is, is pixel art, so it's, but it's hand-drawn pixel art. Pretty much, yeah. All of it's done by myself. So where... The, okay, so now you got to... <laughs> where did you learn how to do pixel art? Yeah, so this one is like... Um, like for, for my whole life, I've kind of always drawn, like, uh, I think from like the age of five, I've always done drawings. I remember I used to have, I, can you remember the CD or the, sorry, the video cover or DVD cover? I can't remember of Spider-Man, like the first one where he's oh, like fine. walking on the glass, like off the side of a building and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 I think I know what you mean. Vaguely remember it. I remember Vaguely I drew that it. and it looked pretty darn good. That's all I can <laughs> say. And I was like, wow. Like, looking back, I don't think I've ever drawn anything as good as when I was, like, eight years old. But, um, but no, like, I've always drawn, like, my whole life, whether it just being doodles. It, it kind of goes on and off, you know? Um, so how did you I, find the, the pixel art? Did you find that quite easy, or is that another whole skill you had to learn? Well, I found it, like, transitioning from that into pixel art, I think, helped a lot because... It wasn't too hard, I guess. I'm, I mean, there's still a lot to learn. Um, like, you can go real deep into, like, pixel art techniques, like anti-aliasing and all sorts of stuff like that. And I think that just requires a lot of practice and a lot of kind of trial and error. But um, for the majority, there's, like, also, I just went to YouTube and I just looked, you know, like, tutorials on how to do pixel art. And once you have, like, the general idea of, like, how to make 
lines look smooth and how to do this and that, then you just you just kind of go from there. It's just practice as well, like anything, I would say. Yeah, just practice. Well, not that you've had time to practice. You've only been doing it a year. <laughs> yeah, but I would say like the drawing definitely yeah. helped because like I've I've had a few people comment on that saying, "Oh my god, how did you learn all of this?" And it's like, well, you know, pixel art wasn't that bad. It was the coding, <laughs> which was probably the hardest. But yeah. Okay. Um, because what what I find amazing is that you you seem to have pretty much ticked all the you know things you must do as a game developer boxes. You, you seem to have ticked most of them um it seems so well thought out like i said with the color palette you know you've ticked the you've ticked the pick a nice color palette that is easily recognizable you know you can tell it's your game you've ticked that box clearly you've you've ticked the um the nice artwork and drawing box um even your press kit on the website even that's fantastic all right <laughs> uh, i look at it and i think could be better but it's just a press kit at the end of the day <laughs> yeah you, you say that but you know there's lots of games out there that don't have a press kit at mm. all you know um and yeah you know, as you can see it's, it's wise but as you this is your first yeah you know, well, i'll say it's your first big full game i know you've mm -hmm. done some other little games it's your um but you, you've got all these things correct you know straight away it's so good it's, i'm so impressed well um, I, I would say like all of this information is is available online like I, you just got to well, look for it and then yeah. you just got to do it uh, well, yes i mean you know you know that i now know that after doing these podcasts but <laughs> but if you're just starting out you know i think i think quite a few people just start programming have a game idea and maybe skip over some of the sort of the admin side of it a little bit you know yeah i don't need a press kit yet or i don't need to start my social media marketing stuff yeah i can do that later maybe yeah, you know yeah. um well i i kind of started with the social media then i started the game actually so like i think i think it actually really helped because um before i started you know before i wanted to like sink hours and hours into this thing it's kind of good to get validation that people actually like what you're doing right because otherwise you're kind of just building stuff in the dark and i think if you if you spend a lot of time building this massive thing in the dark and then you release it and nobody likes it then you're just going to be so disheartened so like in my in my eyes the social media was probably like a tool almost to kind of put stuff out there keep me motivated as well like uh, while i work on stuff but also just to gather feedback like if people don't react to some sort of image or video then it can't be that good or like it, it always depends of course but um like it's kind of good way just to test the market and see if people like stuff and if they do then you're like oh that's interesting i can do that a bit more in the game and stuff like this oh that's so good to hear that li that little sentence <laughs> that is so good to hear because that is so rare and as i've said many times you know marketing your game starts on the first day not release yeah. day oh definitely definitely um, so again but there's another tick box for you <laughs> you know social media um reacting to response getting an idea if people are interested in the game um that's a, it's so well thought out um I, and i mean this isn't like i had some master plan at the beginning you know like you're making it like sound it. like i have but <laughs> It's just me just just doing what what I think's right, and that's it. Well, but that's it. But this is the if you're going to create a game, this is the master plan. This is the way you know it's it should be done. You, you've you've done all the socials correctly. You've done the press. It's fantastic. It's this is ridiculous. This doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me blush, man. I honestly don't even know what to say. <laughs> um, okay, well let's let's skip over the blushing and go into the kickstarter so oh, yes. <laughs> so you have put haiku on kickstarter uh which i have backed uh, and i'm waiting for my awesome mug i could not oh that's ride. that's great to hear man the mugs are beautiful yeah i saw you i think you posted it on instagram um i saw a picture of the mug i was like wow i love the mug yeah okay that that makes a good point maybe i should make a another round of posts on twitter about the merch that you can get yeah definitely um 
because I was tempted with a t-shirt as well. But anyway, um, so the Kickstarter has been running for a couple of weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, this is why I wanted to sort of get you on right, you know, right now as quick as we could, because I'm so excited about this game. Um, and I played the demo, played the little demo that you have on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's fantastic. It plays so well. Again, it looks beautiful. And you're so close to completing your Kickstarter. Yeah, it's a... Uh... That's a great feeling, to be honest. <laughs> so how? Ninety four percent. Ninety four percent. So we have, as recording this, I'm going to try and get this out as quick as I can. But as recording this, we are we have ten days to go, and you're at ninety four percent. Yep. <laughs> so if you're listening, please please jump onto Kickstarter. I'll leave a link below. If you can afford to back the game, then you know we don't need to sell it. As soon as you see it, you're gonna you're gonna want to back it. If you're an indie game fan or a pixel art fan or a metroidvania any of those things you're going to want to play this game uh so yeah i've gone for the um, I, I was trying to i was tempted to upgrade my uh my backing because it's there's loads of cool stuff you can get <laughs> <laughs> well when i was making the kickstarter i thought to myself you know you just got to make like i think this the success to that is just make each tier really really like juicy and that's it yeah, shinies. We're all magpies, aren't we? Exactly. And mm. um, you know, people will find value in in the stuff and want to back a, that a little bit extra. Definitely. So but, I mean, that's a whole other topic that I could go into, like spend well, hours going into. I think. <laughs> but have you found? How have you found Kickstarter? So, as a, would you recommend Kickstarter for a developer if they're looking to fund the game? So far, um, I would. If you're uh, if you're in the same situation as I am, where you know you're only one person, so to say, it's it is good. I can't, I I don't understand how these big teams get onto it and raise money because you have to go through all these taxes and then the money that you actually see that's raised is pretty far from the actual money that you actually get. Oh, really? So it's. Like after you spend money on shipping and rewards and everything like that, then it soon goes down. Then you have to pay taxes and then you have to give Kickstarter about 10%. So it soon disappears. And um, like I just see these big teams on it and I think why, how, maybe it's just a marketing strategy for them almost. Yeah, but, um, it might be, yeah, it might well be. Just It just gets the game out there, doesn't it? Yeah, but oh. for like... For for ind independent people, maybe like a team of two would be really good, but I, I wouldn't say like further than that. But it, it definitely helps, like like you said, get the game out there. But also with the funding, if you're a small team, I would say it's worth it. Right. So let's let's talk about Haiku a little bit. A couple of questions. Yeah. Where did you come up with the idea for, for Haiku? Um, and has how much did, did people's reactions sort of control the design of the game? Because obviously... It's a fine line between mm -hmm. just creating the game that you want to create and creating the game that people actually want. Mm -hmm. So how did you go about, about that? Well, um, Haiku originally kind of the idea for Haiku came from, uh, I don't know if you've seen Alita Battle Angel. No. You haven't seen Alita Battle Angel? Man, no. I totally recommend that movie. Um, they also have like a, an anime, like the original anime is also just as good. Okay. But um, yeah, so anybody watching, that's, that's a great movie. Basically, it's, uh, it's not post-apocalyptic, but um, it's kind of in the future and uh, things are kind of run down a bit and stuff like that. But um, they find a robot in the trash and they repair it and it turns out to be one of these like super old warrior robots that's just like epic and um that was kind of the inspiration for for haiku but like unfortunately that part kind of didn't make it to the final game it kind of evolved a bit since then <laughs> but um coming back to uh like how the audience so to say kind of shapes the game it i don't think i've had too many people telling me what to do you know, mm -hmm. so it's it it's definitely more like this is what I want to do. Um, I do it, I put it out there, and I just see people's feedback, and that's it. But there there are like it, there are cases where you know if you get 
repeated feedback about this and it looks like this and it looks too much like that and like that, then it does get to you and you start having to change your thought process a little bit. But for the majority, I would say it's mainly just what I want to do because at the end of the day, it's my game, I guess. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and I see you've done, you've also done, you've done lots of nods to other creators. Yes. Um, especially in the demo, there's loads of little like hidden secrets that, uh, so you're really helping support and show off other people that you found you know helpful or you're impressed with. Yeah, um, totally. Because I, I think, I think there's nothing wrong in promoting other people, you know, and like praising other people. Like, in, in my mind, it all kind of comes back around anyway. So, you know, the more you give, the more you you will receive in the future. Yeah. Or so, I mean, we can, why not? Yeah, I mean, you can see how well it's gone down already. I mean, lots of people tweet about it, don't they? When they find these little secrets and other little bits, so. Mm-hmm. that's obviously very beneficial and again it's just a nice thing to do yeah and like these people in the past have helped me in some way or or like it could be small or big or whatever it doesn't doesn't really matter i think as long as everybody keeps growing then that's that's the important part because there's nothing worse like i went on reddit once and Uh-oh. some guy was just like <laughs> really nasty and you're just thinking man why 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 are you like this? Like, why don't you want to help <laughs> instead of just going to like rage and just try and bring other people down? It's not easier to destroy than create, isn't it? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how did you approach your, like your social media um, with this? I mean, how have you found the best way to get interactions and to grow the game on, on s- social networks? Is it a, a case of interacting with other developers or how have you, because I'm always interested in, in this fine line of talking to other developers versus finding players. Yeah, and so or are I, they the same thing? You're you're touching a bit of a touchy subject <laughs> for me personally, <laughs> because I have this slight grudge against people. I don't know, like um, like I work in marketing um, at work, like I work on the website, so of course it's important aspect of the whole company and um i don't have much control over what we do in marketing so it's it's i just kind of watch from the sidelines but i've I've learned a lot and the thing that annoys me most is people going after numbers more than going after like quality content and just what people actually want so like when you say like reaching out to other developers and stuff like that, I think it's great as long as you're genuine about it and you actually want to reach out to them, tell them that their work is good, ask them about like how they did this, how they did that. And like, I've actually formed like good relationships with developers, with people that I don't even know what their face looks like, you know, like, yeah, like I think that's fine, but you do see people that might watch a YouTube video and in that YouTube video, they say, comment on everybody's posts, leave a question, boost engagement and all this kind of stuff. And you just think, and you, and you see it and, and it really annoys me when you can clearly see somebody's just spamming comments. They're not, they don't actually care. They're just spamming. Like there's, it's not really genuine. So like that part is what I don't like is, is like people are just trying to trick the numbers. And at the end of the day, all you're doing is hurting yourself because okay, you have all these followers, but they don't really care. They kind of feel like obliged to follow you just because you keep commenting or, or talking to them or something like that. So it's, it's a bit of a touchy subject for me. It's, it, the thing is, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, genuine connections with people is what, you know, that's what's going to make your, again, it's difficult. I don't want to say make your game... It's a really hard. I don't know how to. It is. Know. It's very, very it's, difficult. The thing is, you need you need some followers, and you need people to see the game, and you need which means you need to be interacting with people. You need to be, mm-hmm. you know, you need to be seen online. You know, you need to be seen commenting and talking to people. But that can't be the only reason you're doing it. I think that's yeah. the, that's the weird. There's a weird crossover, isn't there? Yeah, totally. I think I think you've nailed it. It's this weird crossover. That's. Uh... That's that's difficult to grasp. 
but, but you um, seem to be doing a pretty good job. Yeah, because I just think, like, to be honest, I, I block so many people on social media. <laughs> because oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm of this mentality of, like, like, if I don't, you know, if it triggers me or if it does any sort of, you know, like, it creates a bad sense in me, then I don't want to see it. Because otherwise, I think that's how you get, like, burnout in a sense. And, and yeah. um that's that's when you start hating social media when it can be just a good place of cool people that just hang out so like i have blocked people on social media and to be honest it's great because you block them <laughs> and then and then honestly five minutes later you forgot about them and you and you don't even remember them i can't even remember who who i've blocked right now it's just i know that i've blocked people in the past <laughs> but like it, it just removes them from from your life and in a sense, but um, it's for your own mental health more than anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, how have you gone about, what about getting creators um, to sort of look at your game or play your demo? Have you actively tried to do that or have you just sort of naturally let it develop? Um, so for the Kickstarter I have, I made, I, I kind of done it a bit late. I made um, a kind of exclusive version where content creators could get it uh, the weekend before the release. Okay. So that way they can kind of have this exclusive content for their channel. You know, it can kind of, yep. they can be like, oh, look, check out this game. Like I was, I'm kind of lucky enough to get the uh, early access to it and stuff like this. Yep. But I think I've been super lucky with having these bigger content creators because because one guy from my community has been reaching out to like different uh, like Hollow Knight communities and also like Metroid communities and stuff like this. Oh. And luckily, one of the biggest um, Hollow Knight YouTubers just picked it up. And then after that, it just kind of snowboarded. Oh, fantastic. So I yeah. think we've been very lucky. But that's actually an interesting thing to, to think about, isn't it? Um, like, uh, in the future about reaching out to communities of other mm -hmm. i'd say similar style games but you know like you say metroidvania fans or um because we're all fans things we're all fans of playing cool games that, i mean that's what you gotta remember you know everyone likes to play a great game yeah so, and everybody likes to play what they already know as well yeah, absolutely <laughs> so it's it's actually a really good idea about reaching out to communities of but saying that like that was only that was only because of my community like if i didn't have a community then that probably wouldn't have happened no, so like cause... like somebody from my community reached out and managed to kind of get me that that kind of what do you call it that initial push you know yeah so well, if i didn't have that person then i don't know if i would have got that to be honest yeah so well done that person yeah hugo if you're listening to this <laughs> thanks again oh. man is this Hugo the artist? Uh, Hugo H two Pixels. Oh my god! Yeah, how yeah. good is how good is his art? I know it's amazing, right? That's like the the drawings he's done of Haiku as well are just amazing. Yeah, he yeah for, he's the guy I was I was I say politely harassing to uh, let us buy buy the artwork. <laughs> oh yeah, the poster, the poster, so good, so good. Uh, I'll leave a link to his his um, Instagram because his artwork is amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I also noticed that um, oh, Stuart uh, getting the gaming uh, featured you last video, two videos ago. Mm -hmm. You were the first game on his his upcoming Kickstarter uh, video, weren't you? Yeah, I made a cheeky tweet um, a while back saying, "Hey, get indie gaming. Yeah, check out this. Check out this uh, <laughs> Metroidvania that's coming to uh, Kickstarter." <laughs> And I think I sent him like two emails as well. So yeah. I'm not very proud about being featured in that one. feels <laughs> like I harassed him into featuring me. No, hey, he gets so many messages that he doesn't, he doesn't pick stuff he doesn't want to. Oh, well, that's good then. That's, that, that's you know, because I didn't get a reply. So I was like, okay. He gets, honestly, he gets swamped. I mean, I, you know, we have a few emails back and forth and uh, he's just always absolutely swamped with emails and requests. So he, he only picks the stuff that he's, he wants to feature, so you're all right. <laughs> it's amazing, man. Yeah. 
Um, right, okay, so have you thought about any more future plans? Is this what you want to do now? Do you want to be a full-time game developer? Is this yeah. Or... Yeah, like, I'm I'm only, like, 27, but, well, I say that. Like, every every year I say I'm only, but yeah. it keeps going up. <laughs> I've, uh, I've removed that phrase from my vocabulary now. <laughs> But um, so I still consider myself quite young. Um, but uh, like I, I don't think I found anything that I'm this passionate about before, because I've always tried to do stuff, and this is literally the first thing that I think I've spent every single day for the last year and pl- year plus, every single day doing something or obsessing about. You know, like I don't think I've had that sort of passion or drive with anything else. So, I mean, definitely, if I can make this into a living, then that would be great. Like, what? It's what amazing. More, what more could you want? When you find when you find that interest, it's so different. I mean, it 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 changes your life, doesn't it? I mean, it's completely uh, mm-hmm. freeing. I mean, even, you know, even for me doing this, I love doing this. And like, I got home from work. Uh, I'm a I'm a train driver. Mm-hmm. So I got home from work at half past one in the morning last night, and all I could think about was right. I've got to get my PC on uh, because I've got to check out some haiku stuff. Haiku the robot. Uh, I need to make some little notes. So uh, and and I was planning. And I was more worried about that than going to sleep. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and, I think and, I get into bed as well, and I just browse <laughs> videos and all sorts of stuff yeah. all the time. But but I mean, you've inspired. I'd love to. To, you've inspired me to think oh, maybe i should look at some videos i'd love to have a little a little go at creating videos yourself yeah, no 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 creating uh, creating a game ah, like, okay like, yeah I'm sure thinking, maybe i should download unity and have a little play to see what happens totally there's um also a really good game engine where you can make game boy looking games and they oh, recently yeah. released an update and it looks so good because now they allow color before it was just like game boy yeah. the really Brilliant. old game boy but now they have like colors as well. And oh. in there, you don't necessarily need to know, learn how to code. That's, so that, you, sounds, that sounds more me. Yeah. So you can do quite a lot there. And I remember I tried it out when I was first coding or first learning how to code. And it helped me uh, like so much because at the beginning, you're like coding or you're basically just co- copying what they say on the tutorial, like letter by letter. And you don't understand what's going on. <laughs> but when I picked this up, it was like you could forget about the code itself, but you could just think about the logic, you know? So, like, wow. you would have, like, if statements. So, if this, do this. If not, then do that. And um, actions and triggers and stuff like that. So, okay. That sounds for, more like it. Yeah. For me, it was like a turning point, I would say. Like, um, you could focus on the logic, get a grasp on how logically games should work, you know? And then you, and then I kind of switched back to learning how to code in C sharp. But if you want to, if you want to try and make a game, I would suggest using that because it's so simple, so easy to use, and I, it's it's great. Like you can make a freaking Game Boy game. Like I That's love awesome. Game Boy. Yeah, so do I. So I grew up on. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That's amazing. Um, so what about um? So I noticed you got some some cool boss battles. Mm-hmm. in the game i love boss but i love the boss fights in games i wish once you complete a game i wish you could just have the bosses to fight as like mm-hmm. a replay mode um mm-hmm. in, in games but no one, no one seems to do that that'd be amazing so how did you uh how did you come up with your bosses was that uh was that difficult because they seem quite creative um so like the main theme i have throughout the whole game is just everyday objects and uh i was thinking kind of with scale so like uh if you have a garbage magnet that like magnets all the garbage up and moves it around and stuff like that then it's probably bigger than the screw and the nut and all sorts of other little enemies so like that kind of just fit really well um but then you then you just then i just think like okay how does garbage magnet work like it goes up and down right and uh and then it obviously magnets stuff up. So that's pretty much how I did it. <laughs> so like when the like it, I just I just try and think like that in a sense of like what seems realistic because obviously it's a game at the end of the day, so nothing is. But um 
like what what kind of patterns would this boss have and it kind of it's kind of like a process from just picking some sort of everyday object that could be transformed into a robot type looking thing and then kind of what attacks or abilities would that object have if it was in a video game and I don't know if you've seen this mother Taya that's on the Twitter. I think I, I accidentally deleted her from Unity, but no, <laughs> no, I didn't see. I accidentally deleted her, but um, like the <laughs> the the idea was that was that there's all these mini tires in the right. game, yeah, and you can make like some sort of monster truck tire which just spawns mini tires, and that's basically it. That was <laughs> how I came up with that one. <laughs> oh yeah, the t- the tires are bouncing all over the place. I remember, yeah. Uh, getting scuppered by a few of those in the demo. Yeah. Um, so what platforms are you releasing on? Uh, PC, obviously. So Windows and Mac, mainly yeah. because those are the two that I can test on. A few people wrote to me about Linux, yeah. but it's like literally three people out of 700. So I'm a bit yeah. skeptical. Well, it, the thing is, with, I suppose with, with Linux, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? To- it's meant to be really easy to port from Unity to Linux, but when everybody, when anybody says it's meant to be really easy, I don't believe them because <laughs> it because it never is at the end of the day. So, no. I mean, the thing is, because you know, if a lot of a lot of games are not porting to Linux because they just don't think there's a market there, then that may well make you stand out a little bit and give you a whole new following that you didn't know were really there. It could, it could be actually like, you know, I, I just don't have a Linux to test on. So that's what I'm like more afraid of. It's like if I port to Linux and then it's buggy and it breaks and all sorts, I've, I've it, got like, you know, I've got to think of, I've got to think of that. But the thing is that the, the other, the other thing is that the Linux community are desperate for quality games. So yeah. the I amount of support, rethink. amount of support you'll get is probably pretty high because Linux users are. I mean, I used to. I was a Linux user for mm-hmm. seven, eight years, and the community is very, very passionate about their their distribution. You know, their <laughs> so having a quality game. Um, you know, is All right, really, I might have really, to look into that after yeah. this uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but other than that, it's yeah. coming to Switch as well. Switch, okay. So Switch and PC. What about the, the consoles? Um, I decided not to bother. Okay, uh, mainly okay. because I don't know, like Xbox and PlayStation Four. Like apart from that, they're getting new consoles now. But um, yes, true. They're also, I think they're just, I think they're just hard to get in. Like it's just a hard market to get into. I've heard PlayStation is quite tricky to get on. I've heard yeah. people say it's, you know, they've been been made to jump through lots of hoops. Exactly, and. Um, I just can't be bothered to deal with that. I feel, and mm-hmm. I feel, I feel like the gain isn't that big. I don't think most PlayStation players or Xbox players play indie games that much. I might be wrong, of course, but I have this suspicion that they prefer to play like Call of Duty and uh, I don't know FIFA and stuff like that a bit more. Well, it's definitely actually worth it having a chat to. Um um esther uh who, who did a pushy and pulley in blockland one of the one of my episodes i did uh, mm-hmm. because she was um similar situation and she's released hers on everything basically um and she was okay. the one that was telling me about uh, and that's a pixel art sort of arcade game okay um, well and maybe you can ask her if you can uh, share my details <laughs> i will I'll, I'll, I'll connect you up but she's super helpful super nice um so um, it's definitely worth you speaking to her just just before you make the final decision, anyway. Yeah, I was thinking as well, like if it goes all well with the Switch and the uh, PC launch, then I might look into it. Okay, wow, I'm I'm really excited. I can't wait. Um, when so when is it actually? When are you looking to release? Hopefully in uh, October next year. I mean, next year that feels like decades away now. Yeah, but it also scares me. <laughs> How many weeks are there in a year? Was it like 52? 52. So, yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I suppose from your point of view, it doesn't. But from our point of view, it does. So. <laughs> but um, I'm pretty confident. Like, if I could get so much done while working a full-time job, then 
not working a full-time job because this this thing where you have to switch like you have to kind of switch your chip of like okay now i'm at work and i have to focus on work stuff and there's a lot going on at work all the time and then you have to come home and then you have to flick the switch to this game stuff and then you know like this switching backwards and forth i think actually drains quite a lot of energy so hopefully if i can work full time on the game then it would be very focused and very um I won't say easy, but easier <laughs> to, to finish. <laughs> so have you printed out your uh, your final notice at work yet? Not yet, but I've uh, <laughs> I've I've already let let some people know in the sense oh, of like uh, upper management know that it's coming. Oh, because you're so close! Come on, people. Honestly, you, we need to back this because, like I said before, I need my mug. <laughs> I'd be very upset. In fact, my partner was actually um, I showed her she's. Yeah, into a little bit of gaming, but nothing, mm-hmm. nothing major. And I was telling her about your story, and you know about how you've just created this from a year's worth of learning, which is unbelievable still. Um, and she was like, "Oh, maybe I should back it as well." So she's she has got it. The get she's got the Kickstarter saved, and she's like, "Well, if it's close, I'm I'm just going to back it just to make sure it gets over the line." <laughs> oh, that's great. I I have like a it's. It's such a big learning experience as well, having this Kickstarter. Like, it's it's insane. Like, um, so, like small details that you would have never imagined. Like, I have about a thousand people that are just following the campaign but haven't backed. Oh, really? And it's like it's it's just it's not like I, I try not to think about go into it too much. It's just like an interesting thing. Yeah, what to are they know. waiting for? Yeah, like, because like you said, you know, like your wife could be following the campaign, but just on the terms of like, if it if it's only missing a little bit at the end, then I'll back. And then there's other people that might just be thinking, I'm not going to back until it's fully funded, you know, yeah. until it's a short yeah. deal. So like the whole, there's like probably a whole psychological level underneath that. But I was just thinking it's interesting that like a thousand people are just following the campaign and have yeah. a back yet. It's actually interesting of when, because it's it's not. It, people seem to treat treat it like an eBay auction. Almost, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put some quick early bids in just so I'm in there, and then I wait till the end. It's that middle section that um, seems to be the hardest. Yeah, totally. Um, and I've I, it's it's peculiar because I have these early early bird tiers, right? I have like I think I have about three hundred of them. So uh, occasionally you would get somebody that upgrades. So they would get like a mug, for example, right? They would go from having an early bird to getting a mug. So now that old early bird is available. Ah. So you have these lucky people that just stumble across it and they're like, oh my God, that's the last early bird and just snatch it up. That's what happens. I see. Okay. So like yesterday I sold another early bird. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> because somebody upgraded. But like I would have never even thought of that from a... You know, like a consumer perspective, it's mm. only because I'm on the other side I can yeah, actually I see it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm looking. I'm. I'm. I'm browsing your upgrades. Oh, so tempting. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So, is there anything that you would you would like to sort of cover or go over um, before we bring this to an end? Is there anything we haven't mentioned? Um, no, I think. I think it's good. Like uh, the Kickstarter, uh, obviously, uh, I would like to cover. That ends in the 9th of October. So it's 10 days from today. We have like a bunch of rewards. Uh, All of the designer boss tiers have sold out, unfortunately. So you can't design a boss anymore. Damn. But but we still have a designer character. I think there's two left for that. Uh, that one's actually really exciting because I think design a character, you could do so many interesting things with that and like how it interacts with the world and stuff like that. I think that's, to be honest, that's the one that excites me the most. That but is- we also have like design an enemy. You said the merch. Uh, we have beta testing tiers, which are reasonably low. Uh, I think it's very important that I have as many beta testers as possible, you know, to make sure that it's it's a good product at the end of the day absolutely um and then yeah just all just a simple get the game kind of pre-order absolutely so what um 
we'll leave lots of links because again as again you are very supportive of, of everybody that's helped you is there anything you need help with by the way are you looking for any um sound designers or how, how have you got again a small subject but how have you how have you dealt with the the audio in the game and the sound so um i already have someone that's helping with the sound uh so ooh, to be honest i think if i was if i could like hire someone it would be to do all of the pr like man that's that's so hard pr is so hard yeah again common theme that is such a common say problem but issue for developers it's just because it's the time it takes you know it's the time and effort and there's a lot to it and yeah yeah, it's another full-time job isn't it yeah and i'm assuming it's like uh you know getting the gaming's email inbox is probably just full and it's so hard to just stand out on an email with just a simple email subject line like i mean on twitter and instagram it's a bit easier to stand out because it's quite visual but yeah just an email yeah just an email is so hard like yeah that's it's it's definitely something that i have yet to learn about like this is this kickstarter has been a good teaching and it's basically only taught me that it's just hard (laughs) (laughs) And that I'm no way near. I have I have no idea like how to do it, good or uh, effectively. It, it is difficult. I mean, in the last episode, um, actually it's not released yet, but in the last episode when we spoke to um, uh, Trista Bites, who is a presenter, streamer, content creator on Twitch and YouTube and everywhere, um, she gave some awesome, awesome tips about how to how developers can how they should contact you know other content creators and what they mm-hmm. should be doing um, and how many people get it wrong is, mm-hmm. is unbelievable um so if anyone's listening who wants some tips on how to do that um listen to the last episode with trista and there's just tons of awesome tips in there so uh, it's definitely worth a listen yeah i think i've learned as well that you shouldn't just blanket email people you should try and build like relationships and stuff like that that's the way to go yeah absolutely but, but that just takes a lot of time and if you have like 50 other things that you sh- that you sh- you're meant to be doing then it's yeah yeah and you just leave it on the back burner <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> um oh i've been i've been hijacked by a two-year-old hey hello <laughs> um okay right so uh where can everybody find you uh on the socials so I'm pretty active on Instagram and Twitter. I'm not so much on Facebook, but um, I'm also on Facebook. And yeah, I would love to do some YouTube videos in the future, but we'll see about that. You know, like monthly devlogs. I was uh, hoping to do that. But uh, Instagram and Twitter are my main main go-to. Okay. And do you have a Discord? I do have a Discord. I keep... I have to get used to that. I'm that I've got a Discord. <laughs> like uh, so many people talking it, and I talking it all the time and stuff like that. But I just forget to tell people about it. I just forget to tell people about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, send me a link, and we'll. Uh, oh, well, I'll join to start with, um, and then um, we'll link all everything that you've heard will be a link in the show notes anyway. So, awesome stuff. Uh, right. Well, like I said I appreciate we're all uh, squeezing. We we squeeze this interview in here with a. <laughs> with our with our crazy schedules we've got going on yeah um, so um i really appreciate you coming on at such short notice to, to talk to me it's been fantastic oh no it's been my pleasure honestly um okay well again if you're listening head over to kickstarter um find haiku the robot and make sure you back it thanks um okay well take care and i'll speak to you uh, i'll speak to you in the future yep take care everybody bye and that brings us to the end of another episode. So a big thank you to Jordan. Uh, we were a bit pushed for time, so um, hence the reason why the podcast was a little bit shorter this week. So apologies if you like a longer podcast, but um, it's more important that we actually got the recording done before the Kickstarter ended, really. So that's why that happened. I thought Jordan's story was really interesting, especially with the amount of time he's actually been developing. So I'm sure that's going to give inspiration and hope to a lot of people listening. I hope it does anyway. Um, and if it does, then please write in to indiegamex at gmail.com. I'd love to hear what you're going through and if uh, Jordan's story has inspired you ever so slightly or 
given you a bit more hope. That'd be great to know. As usual, all the links will be in the show notes or in the YouTube description below, wherever you're listening. Um, the Kickstarter may well be finished by the time you actually listen to this, but please make sure you head over to, to Jordan's game to Haiku the Robot and, and follow along and you can still you know you can still join in the community follow along join the discord and buy the game when it's released so you, you know that's all still there for you a big welcome to all the new we've had lots of new downloads recently so a big welcome to everybody who's started joining in and listening so hello there and um, please get in touch again twitter instagram email wherever you want send me a message i put a tweet out on twitter believe it or not um, a few days ago just asking for indie developers who are right at the start of their journey because I'd really like to do a regular feature with a developer where they come on the show maybe maybe once every two or three weeks, maybe a month, and we just spend 15 minutes, a really short podcast, and just do like an update of, of their journey. So I, I kind of want to follow them from start to finish. So I've had loads and loads of submissions. So thank you so much if you have submitted your your game or your idea at least, uh, to me on Twitter. I'm trying to get back to everyone that I can, and I'll choose the the project that I... Again, the game doesn't really matter, so it's not a, it's not the game that I like the sound of. It's really the the person and the situation and the, what the stage that they're at that I'm after. So once I've decided, I shall let you all know. So I'm pretty excited about that. It will mean some extra podcasts, so there'll be some shorter episodes in between these these main interviews that we have. So that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for all the great feedback, as always. It's been really great hearing from everybody. Until next time, which will be episode 20. Amazing. See you later, all. Bye.